Chapter 4 Dropping the Beat The silence was too good to be true. With his head buried in his pillow, headphones askew on his neck, Richard waited for the inexplicable quiet to be broken. The sounds of Brad and Tess's vigorous sex still haunted him, like the killer who was calling from inside the house. Was it possible they had finished so quickly? He lifted his head to listen better, but he only heard the gentle hum of the ceiling fan rotating lazily above. Nothing. Perhaps they were hungrier than they were horny. Richard pushed himself into a sitting position, feeling a sense of full-body exhaustion. At least now he was free to focus on an episode of Star Trek before finally sticking a fork in what had turned into a horrible fucking day. Oh yeah, fuck babes, I'm so close. I am going to nut all over your tits. Oh, do it. Oh, I want to feel you come all over me. Oh, 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 oh. The side of Richard's face twitched with an involuntary spasm. More moans. Distinct slaps. Brad sounding like a fucking pig. Tess yelping and crying out, sounding like the nastiest video Richard had ever seen on Pornhub. How was it even louder now? Richard's face twitched again, and he felt something around his eye begin to strain. He tried to massage the muscle, but it didn't help. Just like there was no helping his heart. There was nothing worse for a hopeless romantic than listening to the love of your life getting drilled by the biggest, dumbest, most toxic douchebag in the history of douchebags. The real question, and the one Richard couldn't avoid any longer, was why he expected anything different. He was, after all, Dick Gobbler, the skin flute slobberer, permanent resident of the Tess Taylor friend zone, and glorified professional secretary with zero prospects of career advancement. This was Richard's lot in life. He couldn't even manage to put his love for Tess into words. Why should he deserve anything more than listening to her get fucked in the room next door? This was who Richard Gebler was, uselessly cranking his own dick to Tessa's Instagram and failing to achieve orgasm even there. Totally fucking useless. The moans and grunting continued from down the hall, and Richard trudged to his connected bathroom to relieve himself before crying himself to sleep, probably. He lifted the toilet seat, fished his dick out, and waited for the flow to start, all while Tess continued to remind him of how close Brad fucking Johnson was to bringing her to the peak of orgasmic bliss. Oh, yeah, baby, hold on. Right there. Oh, keep going. Richard sighed and rubbed his eye. The pressure in his bladder had become more noticeable, but the stream eluded him for some reason. He looked down at his limp dick hanging over the toilet bowl. Nothing was happening. Oh, fuck, babes! Oh, I am so fucking close! Oh, not yet! Keep going! Oh, 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 yeah! 
Down below, Richard's useless dick seemed to be living up to the expectations thrust upon it. Richard gave it a shake, but everything remained dry. Not even the tiniest drop of piss. So he pushed, contracting those abdominal muscles, drawing on whatever mind-body connection was needed to tell his bladder, Please release yourself! And like Chuck's misguided attempt at street magic, nothing happened. In the room next door, the headboard began knocking against the wall. Thump, thump, thump. Richard pushed again, his face pinching into a grimace. A genuine sense of panic began to bubble up. What if he couldn't pee? Wouldn't that lead to an infection? Shit! Was he already infected? Was that why he couldn't pee? Oh, fuck! What was that biosample that Chuck accidentally delivered to the executive suite? Was that why... Oh, goddamn, babes! Oh, your pussy is so fucking tight! Richard's eyes widened as the panic took hold. The sound of sex became muffled in his ears, distorted by the thumping of his own heart. He felt the pressure building in his bladder, and then the panic began to boil over into fear. Why the fuck couldn't he pee? Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Richard pushed harder. Oh! Oh! Oh fuck! Come on, babes! Richard's dick didn't so much as twitch. He shook it again, the pain in his bladder causing tears to prick his eyes. What the actual fuck was going on? If he could just... Oh, God, yes! God, yes! God, yes! God, yes! Richard pushed harder than he had ever tried before, eyes squeezing shut against the threads of fire needling up from his bladder, teeth gritting and those overworked molars screaming out in red-hot pain. Something plopped into the toilet. The sound of the splash registered in Richard's ears, but it took far too long to process in his brain. The pressure in his bladder began to ease as piss began streaming out. The relief was fucking exquisite and his anxiety immediately eased. When he felt his groin get wet and drops of something warm splashed across his lips, Richard opened his eyes. He touched his tongue to his lips in confusion. He tasted something salty and bitter. And then he realized his pee was spraying wide, hosing down the toilet and the bathroom wall as if a nozzle had been turned from stream to shower. And the splashback was starting to soak him. His panic returned with a vengeance, and Richard again flexed those abdominal muscles to cut off the stream waving his hands in front of his crotch to block the spraying flow and redirect the chaotic rain of urine. Those needles of pain returned as he struggled to cut himself off midstream. The flow tapered off before stopping completely. The pain in his bladder numbed and then vanished. Piss dripped 
from Richard's chin, his eyes wide with a primal fear. His gaze was locked straight ahead, too afraid to look down, too afraid to see what had plopped into the toilet bowl. There was no way it couldn't possibly be. Oh, fuck me, Brad! Oh, fuck! A shiver ran up Richard's spine, and he twitched. His hands hovered inches over his crotch, trembling. But he didn't need to touch anything to realize something felt different. With a mounting sense of dread, his gaze lowered. When his eyes had gone as far as they could, he could see the back edge of the bowl of water, just beyond the curve of his nose and upper lip. Then he began to ease his head down. He could hear the tendons creaking in his neck. The entirety of the toilet bowl came into view. Horror washed over him. Richard's fucked up pelvis filled the lower part of his vision, but he couldn't bring himself to focus on the details. He couldn't tear his eyes away from his penis floating in the toilet bowl water. His penis. His penis had fallen off. His penis was in the toilet. Panic gripped Richard's chest again, and he dropped to the floor, knees banging against the tile. One hand grabbed the ceramic edge of the bowl, while the other rested against the piss-soaked tank. His face was a mask of horror, staring into the bowl. Yes, that was really his dick and balls floating in lazy circles. Bracing his hand against the tank, he thrust his other hand into the toilet, grabbing for his detached penis. As his fingers wrapped around the organ, it slipped through his grip. Richard grunted in awkward unison with Brad next door while Tess moaned. The climax was near. Thank fucking God. Not that Richard currently had any perceptional awareness of the primal, whole body and mind, otherworldly fucking that was taking place. His hand splashed in the toilet bowl, chasing his slippery dick through the water. Rogue piss trickled down his forehead and into his eye, stinging sharply. The hand, braced against the tank, slipped in piss and hit the lever. With one eye squeezed shut, and one hand thrust into the toilet, Richard froze. The toilet gurgled and flushed. Richard's dick circled the drain. A grave sense of sheer panic seized him, and Richard dove into the bowl after his dick, thrusting both hands into the water to rescue his dismembered member. I'm gonna fucking explode, babes! Give me your cum! I'll give you a cum! Fuck that! The toilet gasped. Tess gasped. Brad groaned. Richard snatched desperately. Fuck! 
the toilet gurgled and began to refill. Richard's breath came in short, shallow gasps. His eyes stuck wide with traumatic horror. He felt like he had just run a marathon, only to be greeted at the finish line by a firing squad. After a brief eternity, roughly the time it took for the tank to refill, Richard tried to move. Again, he could feel the tendons creaking and stretching as he lifted his shoulder. Then he raised his arm, slowly bringing his hand up to eye level. Clutched in his fingers was Richard's penis, its ball sack swinging indifferently underneath his fist. Richard had pushed too hard, and his dick had fallen right off. Tess cried out from down the hall, and the sound of her orgasm cut through Richard's own catatonic state. He flinched as Tess came, and his fingers reflexively loosened. His dick slipped, and Richard panicked, grasping tight against the shaft before it could fall. He breathed a long sigh of cautious relief, a storm of confusion whipping up inside him. And then Richard's dick twitched in his hand, its bulbous head twisting back on its own accord, testicles wiggling against the bottom of Richard's fist. Startled, Richard flung open his hand, and the dick splashed back into the toilet. Mother fucker.